Where's the bear? Whose blonde life is it anyway? In association with Sterling Creations and VIP Tech Productions present Ask Donna. Donna Jodden answers your questions and offers you tips and tricks on being an author, an expert, a sight loss coach, and an advocate. Greetings everybody! My name is Donna J. Jodhan and I am your host of the Ask Donna Show. Welcome to the month of August and folks, I can't believe we're now into August. Yep. Summer is just moseying along here, and I hope that everybody is enjoying their summer, has done some really fun things, have gotten to do some new things, have been able to do some old things, and are discovering and recovering and doing all kinds of things outdoors. Yes, indeed. Welcome to my show, Ask Donna. And this is week one for the month of August. You know that every month or every week I have a show. And for the first week of each month, we have what we call Ask the Blogger. For the second week, we have Ask the Coach. For the third week, we have Ask the Homemaker. And for the fourth week, we have ask the reviewer so it is the first week of august it's time for me to introduce myself as the blogger you know i want to thank everybody who continued to provide me with all kinds of thoughts ideas comments and feedback because it is only through you and with you that i could continue my show and I want to thank my dear friend Victor for continuing to give me this opportunity to be with you. I try to enrich my shows with all kinds of tips, all kinds of thoughts, all kinds of everything. So for this week, we're going to settle down and I will come to you as the blogger. In my first session, or in, my, in the first part of this show, Ask the Blogger. We're going to be talking about some tips on bullying and bullies. How to spread awareness about bullies and bullying and how to deal with bullies and bullying. Okay, let's talk about bullies and bullying for this first part of my show. How do you build awareness about bullying and bullies? Well, too many of us really do not take the time to consider how we can spread awareness about bullies and bullying. You know, I have seen so many instances <clears throat> of bullies and bullying. I've seen so many instances of victims of bullies and bullying. And I've also seen a lot of instances where bullies, they don't even know that they are bullies. Okay? And what we need to consider is problem solving rather than the creation of a problem. We, we need to spend more time in understanding why folks are bullies, why they spread bullying, and how can we, in turn, stop the spread of bullies and bullying. Okay? It, it's not as difficult as you can think, or may think. As someone with a vision impairment, I am an ad adult, Bullying, killing, bullying continues to take place. Anything from face-to-face -face bullying to cyberbullying, and cyberbullying is really, really growing. 
It's growing. It's a concern for everybody. Cyberbullying takes place amongst any amongst kids of any age, from the oldest to the youngest. And sadly enough, it also takes place amongst adults. Nowadays, people are using cyberbullying as a means to get to their victims. It used to be that it was only face to face in the good old days, but now it's cyberbullying. And we need to concentrate on ways to stop this cyberbullying. I don't believe that we can stop cyberbullying completely, but we can curtail it to a great extent. And when it comes to victims of bullies and bullying, I'm afraid that those of us with a disability are more than likely or victims, you know, we, we are more disposed or predisposed to being victims of bullies and bullying rather than the mainstream person. Now, I'm not saying that the mainstream person is not a victim of bullying. What I am saying that persons with disabilities and even seniors are most are victims of bullies and bullying. We are more open to bullies and bullying. And we need to keep this in mind when we strive to protect our seniors and persons with disabilities. And in the case of someone with a vision impairment, it makes it even more difficult when we cannot see the person who is bullying us, where they're standing, where they're coming from. That is very, very difficult to deal with, okay? When you cannot defend yourself because you don't know where your, your bully or your... When you cannot see where the bully is sitting or standing, it's very, very difficult to deal with, okay? So what I'm trying to say here today, and I hope I'm not confusing anybody, is that bullies and bullying, especially cyberbullying, is becoming more and more of a concern, more and more of a problem. And we need to concentrate on problem solving rather than problem creating. We need to understand more why bullies and their bullying tactics are taking over more and more of our space. And we need to pay more attention to not just face-to-face -face bullying, you know, bullying in the schoolyard, bullying at malls, bullying almost everywhere. We need to pay more attention as well to cyberbullying, which is growing by leaps and brown, bounds, and will continue to do so. So let's put our heads together, and if you have any suggestions for me, please send your feedback to askdonna on blindlife at gmail.com. Okay? Ask Donna on blindlife at gmail.com. Okay, on to the second portion of my show, and it's all about entrepreneurial tips. I have been an entrepreneur since 1998 and I have adopted various roles as an entrepreneur, as an advocate, as an author, as a blogger, as a coach, as a dinner mystery writer and producer, as an entrepreneur of course, as a law graduate and as a podcast, com podcast commentator. It is very important for us to be able to identify certain things when we decide to become an entrepreneur. Entrepreneurship is not for everybody, but it can be for you if you know exactly what you're looking for, why you're looking for it, and how to look for it. In essence, a roadmap. Need a roadmap. And for this week, I want to concentrate on what 
can the workplace for an entrepreneur look like? Okay? It's practically what you want it to be. Your workplace as an entrepreneur could be your home office. Okay? It could be a home office located in your basement, in your attic. It could be your workplace could be even outside in your garden for the summer. It could be in a little shed outside in your backyard. It could be your back deck. It could be anything. It could be what you make it to be. That's what your home office is for an entrepreneur, okay? It could be anything from a loft to an apartment. That means where you're living. You could be living in a loft. You could be living in an apartment. That is your home office. It could be anywhere from a condo to a house. So what I'm trying to say here is that your workplace as an entrepreneur could be anywhere that you live. Okay? Home to house to condo to apartment to loft could be any of these places. It could be a room in a basement or an attic, as I just mentioned. Okay? You know, your home office could also be a room in a mall. Yeah, as long as you find it comfortable and a place where you can concentrate and you can get down to work, that is where your home office is. It may be no office at all. You can make your office however you want it to look. Okay? Stylish or homey. Professional or artsy. Bare bones or lots of clutter. Anything like that. That's what your home office is and that's a beauty of being an entrepreneur is that you get to decide how you want your home office to be, how you want it to look, where you want to locate it. I think it's a great part of entrepreneurship because it shows your creativity and your ability to think outside the box. So give it some thought as you think about entrepreneurship for today. All right then. On to the next section of my show for today. And it's all about tips on scams and scammers. Okay? More and more we are having these types of scams of phone calls with sob stories. Okay? You know, the grandma scam has been going on for years and years and years and as long as you are conscious of this type of scam or that you are familiar with this type of scam you will stay out of the way of scams and their scam scammers and their scams sorry now let me tell you about the grandma scam what it is is that someone is going to call you and tell you or it's the voice at the other end, unknown to you, but they know who you are. For some reason, they have been able to pounce upon you, and they call you and they tell you that your grandson is in big trouble. Your grandson is in the police station and needs your help. Now, it could either be someone telling you this and telling you, where, you know, what you need to do in order to have your grandson free. Or it could be even someone phoning you, telling you that they are your grandson. So you have two types of scammers here. Either a voice telling you that your grandson is in trouble, or a voice telling you that they are your grandson and that they need your help. Listen. Before you go spilling out any money to anybody, 
check this one out carefully. Make sure that that is indeed your grandson, and in most cases, it is not your grandson. Fairly recently, I had a friend who told me that her mom <coughs> received a call from a young man saying that uh, he was her grandson and he needed help. He even called the name, the correct name of her grandson. But she was smart enough to say, where are you? And he said, no, 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 you can't come to me. I have to, you know, I have to tell you where to drop off the money. And she said, no, I need to know why. And if I don't know why, then I'm not coming. And she started to argue with him. And he hung up eventually after a few minutes. Then she called her daughter and said, well, is Marco in trouble? And she said, no, Marco is sitting right here. So you see, in many instances, the scammers are get, becoming more and more able to take your personal information and use it to try and entice you to give them money because they say that your grandson is in trouble. Please be aware of this, okay? So be very, very careful. So take care, you know, take care of this type of scam. Or you have the grandson who says, you know, Grandma, I really want to visit you and I have no money to visit you. Could you send me some money because I really want to see you. Okay? Be careful of that type of call also. What is happening here is that the caller is playing on your emotions. But in some cases, it's hit and miss because, you know, they say that your grandson is in trouble. If you don't have a grandson, you can laugh at them and hang up the phone and just simply say, ha, 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 I don't have a grandson. Okay? So be very, very careful. Um, be careful and take care of this grandma camp a uh, scam and you'll be okay okay so you have to be careful that even if they call you by your last name or your first name don't fall for it be very careful because scammers are becoming more and more adept at using your personal friends. Just hang up the phone, okay? Okay. All right, so here is my thought for today. How about online shopping services? How, what do you think of online shopping services? Do you think that it is an advantage for you? Do you think that you need to get help when doing online shopping? Do you feel comfortable when doing online shopping that you can enter your information freely and without having to get assistance to help you with it? Do you think that um, companies offer enough support when you seem to be struggling to get your online shopping done? Just food for thought for today. Let me know what you think. Send me an email to ask Donna on blindlife at gmail.com. Ask Donna on blindlife at gmail.com. Okay. Okay. I want to share with you where you can learn more about my advocacy please visit www.sterlingcreations.ca and go to the blog page okay so it's www.sterlingcreations.ca slash blog okay and there you will see a lot of my editorials on advocacy all right now for the final part of my show before I talk to you about my special offer is my mental stretch. 
My mental stretch is based on the MIC principle. It's all about, you know, dealing with your mind, your imagination, and your creative juices. Helping you to rid your mind and imagination of clutter and cobwebs and to spark and stimulate your creative juices. I've been using this strategy for many years now and I have shared this strategy with friends and family and associates and for the most part they are quite pleased with how this strategy when properly used can help them in all kinds of different situations. In times of anxiety, in times of stress, in times of sadness, in times of what I call crunch time, in times of, of anything that puts pressure on you to perform. Okay? And the mental stretch can be used at any time of the day. Any time from first thing in the morning to before breakfast, mid-morning, before lunch, in the afternoon, before dinner, after dinner, and before bedtime. Okay, and it's based on using one of your senses. Sense of hearing, sense of smell, sense of taste, sense of touch, or sense of sight. Or you can use any of these senses in combination with each other. Okay, it's a very, very flexible tool and it's all meant to strengthen your mind and your imagination and to get your creative juices flowing. It's a means of recharging, regurgitating, refreshing, and so on of your mind and your imagination and your creative juices. Because if you think about it, if you can use stretches for your neck, your back, your toes, your fingers, your feet, your belly, why not the mental stretch? So give the mental stretch a try. And for this week, we're going to concentrate on the sense of hearing. Okay? Now, in, in some cases, you'll actually be able to listen to the sounds that I'm suggesting to you. Or you can imagine hearing, hearing these sounds. Uh, the sounds that I am suggesting to you. Sit in a relaxing chair in your dining room or your living room or your bedroom. Lie in bed, you know, if you want. Or you could be walking in the park or walking on the street, anywhere. So, for the sense of hearing for this week, let's think of it. Let's think of this. All right. A radio playing softly in the background. As you're working away in the kitchen or in your office, your home office, and, you know, you just want something to give you that extra um. Think of the radio playing softly in the background. It could be music, it could be a talk show, it could be a radio show. But the radio is there, the sound of the radio is there to help you uh, concentrate more fully on your work. It has to be soft, can't be loud, okay? So think of the radio. Okay, here's another suggestion for you. Someone practicing their guitar. You know, sometimes you may think, I don't want to hear my kid practicing his or her guitar. Or I don't want to hear the neighbor next door with their guitar. But you know, if you think about it, the strings of a guitar can be very really sweet. Yeah. Think of a guitar and its sound and someone practicing their guitar. This is another way for you to use the sounds of a guitar with my mental stretch. How about a band playing in the park? Again, you can imagine the band playing in the park. You don't necessarily have to be in the park. 
Use your mind and your imagination to get to those. Okay? So I've given you three suggestions. The guitar, the band playing in the park, okay? Um, or a radio playing softly in the background. Use these three sounds with regard to your sense of hearing to get you going this week with my mental stretch. Okay, again, if you want to communicate with me, send me an email to askdonnaonblindlife at gmail.com. And now, here is my virtual binto basket for this week. How about a road trip basket? Let's pretend you're going on a road trip and you need to fill your basket with some stuff. Of course, the kids would want their snacks, all kinds of pretzels, peanuts, cookies, cupcakes. We're going to put all of this into the basket for this week. We're also going to put into the basket some board games for the kids. While you're you're driving away, the kids are playing in the, in the back, in the back seat. They're playing board games. I'm going to send you I want to put in this basket a little radio so that you can have your radio playing as you go along. Now, sometimes the reception may not be that good, so your radio may not work. So, but I'm still going to put it in for you. So you have your board games, your little radio, <coughs> your snacks, of all the pretzels, peanuts, cupcakes, cookies, Thermoses of cool drinks, lemonade, fruit punch, fruit juices. Don't forget the water, of course. You need that as well. And what else can I put into my bento basket for this week? Ha, ha, ha. Well, you could put some, uh, maybe some DVDs in there as well, some CDs. Don't forget your players as well. Okay. So there we go, folks, and I'm going to end my show with my special offer to you. And I think what I'm going to be doing is come September, I'm going to start um, circulating on my shows these announcements that you have so kindly and so generously shared with me. We've gotten a good number of feedback or good number of submissions, I should say. And I think it's time for us to start sharing this come September. Okay, what is my offer all about? It's all about you wanting to share your news with us. It could be news about yourself. It could be news about anything from yourself to someone else or something going on in your community, okay? No more than 150 words. Send it to askdonna on blindlife at gmail.com. My editors and I will review it, and as long as it contains no foul language or no criticisms of anyone else, we will be pleased to make this happen for you. You have a choice, and you have to let us know. If you want us to... Um, announce your submission either on two of my Ask Donna shows, which is this show, or two of my Dining with Donna shows, which also runs weekly, or one of each. Again, two of my Dining show, Dining with Donna shows, two of my Ask Donna shows, or one of each of these shows. Send your submission to Ask Donna on blindlife at gmail.com and when we approve your submission, we will let you know and you can then pay us a very affordable price of $5 monthly. And when we receive your payment, which you can send to PayPal, that's P-A-Y-P-A-L at donnajohnham.com we, when we receive your, your payment, we will let you know, and from there on, your submission will be announced. 
Okay? So again, take advantage of this of this offer. Five dollars monthly. You have a choice of which of my shows you would like me to make your submission or a talk. Which of my shows you would like me to announce your submission? All right? Good, everyone. It's time for me to give a wrap to this show. I wish you a good rest of the day, a good rest of the week. Um, you guys have fun. Continue to enjoy the outdoors. Thank you, Victor. And I will see you next week. Take care, stay safe, and bye for now. Tune in every Wednesday morning at 10.30 a.m. Eastern, 7.30 a.m. Pacific for Ask Donna on Whose Blind Life Is It Anyway?